The world was amazing to watch. A win under your belt must have felt good at that stage. Uh, well, well, felt good on the, the main stage. Straight sets, amazing. Uh, that that for me, I was like, Matt's Matt's here. Matt's 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 arrived. It wasn't so much the win. It was for me. Like I keep banging on. I'm a huge darts fan. Now I ended up with the best checkout percentage of seventy five percent of the tournament. And that, for me, put me in my moment of history, so to speak. You know, that will go in the, the history. I'm in the, the history book of the World Championship. And to have that, and now, when that inevitably gets beat in the next however many years, that will come up again because it was a milestone history point. Oh, that's the best chip out percentage in a match since Matt Edgar did it in 2021. And yeah, that's that's something that I'm really, really proud of and something that, you know, if you're not going to win the world title, you want to make a mark somehow, whatever mark that is, you want to make your, you want your moment because for 45 minutes when you're playing that game, you are the most relevant thing in the whole world of darts for 45 minutes. Yep. And I use those 45 minutes to not just those 45 minutes. I can now have an achievement for hopefully years before someone tops that. And that's something that I made sure I made those 45 minutes count. So it was yeah. a great match. And there's the wrestling for you again. <laughs> you get you, you've got an eight minute match tonight okay for eight minutes in this room i'm the most relevant thing how yep. do i make people care about those eight minutes yeah and that, that's yeah and then came sulevich who seems to have two sides to him it just depends on who turns up and unfortunately he turned up for that match but i mean we followed and shared your highs after the first win and the loss with obviously that 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 second through on your youtube channel which you shared and you know like i said i'll add the link in the uh, the description guys do do check him out out i think ryan had had an easier draw but the loxy boys don't seem to get easy draws not that there is really a thing as an easy draw and i guess anymore no i think them days are well gone you know well and especially with the way q schools changed this year you know beforehand you could get someone come through who probably, you know, Q school in its old format did not give you the best players. There's players on the challenge tour that are better than some of the players on the pro tour. But the new format of Q school is only going to strengthen this early round phase in the fact that you've now got to get through two phases of Q school. It's not just one day no more. The, the places have reduced because the pools got bigger. Yeah. There's, there's so many different things now that are going to make sure that Q School does start to give you a stronger lineup of players that come out of that. And with that, then first rounds, second rounds are just going to get tougher and tougher. It, it's You look at players that have come from completely off the pace. Durban Dovenbode lost his tour card this time last year, mm. won it back. Mm. After two years on the tour, lost it, won it back, and now he's in the top 32. Mm. You know, the players that have played these first rounds could genuinely go on to win the titles, and that in, that's encouraging for me. And, you know, I look at that World Championships, and I, I still, uh, if you'd have asked me before, and I'd have told you I was going to beat Mensa. I was I was confident of that win. Mm. And I wasn't, I wasn't for any second expecting Mensa to play as well as he did. Mm. And then if I'd have done that, it'd been Gary Anderson, who I've recently beat with a 170 finish at the summer series. Well, that would so, a nice little needle. Yeah, so, you know, and he didn't play well in that one. So it then starts potentially opening. And, you know, I, I think the fear factor's gone. You know, I'm talking about playing Mensa Suljevic here, and I'm telling you I thought I was going to win. I was certain I was going to win. And to the point where I was already sorting arrangements out for after Christmas, to come back down to play the next round. And when you look at that and you look at that certainty, he's a major winner. He's been in the Premier League, but I think I'm going to go beat him. And then I was confident of beating Gary Anderson, who was a runner-up in the match play, two-time world champion, one of the best five players that's ever lived. Yeah, yeah. People don't care no more. You know, there's I mean, no fear no more. The standard is is staggering, though. You know, the, the basic standard 
you know, I, I'm nowhere really near, um, really near Q school. I wanted to go really for the experience and then decided actually this is going to be the biggest Q school year. I, I want to sit back and I want to watch what happens. I want to, you know, follow, follow. So I've got, I've got that. My next door neighbor is, is going, there's a few people locally that I can support. It's going to be, I think it's going to be absolutely thrilling um, to watch. Yeah. And it's so interesting. It's going to be really good. So guys, even though there might not be big tournaments coming up, Q school, watch it. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I think now you've also got a second channel. Which I feel yeah. is at the expense of your better half, Jody. Uh, <laughs> Edgar's Playground. Um, tell us about that. I pranked Jody a few times and I filmed getting her because I, I, I prank her almost daily. I literally, we're like two big children. We're always at each other, you know, trying to trying to get each other things. And I kept getting with things. I'm like, I got away a good one. And I was like, I want to put this on my YouTube channel because it's so good. But then I thought, it doesn't really fit in with the channel. Mm. And I thought, I don't want to detract what I'm doing. And I certainly didn't want two audiences within one audience. Mm. So I didn't want people coming for the dart stuff and then being turned off by that. And I didn't want people coming for that and then being turned off of the dart stuff. And I mean, two audiences within that. So I thought, right, what I'll do, I'll just set up a second channel. And all I'll do is anything that I find funny or I get footage from anything, I'll just chuck it on there because then my i'll put on my social media so any of my normal regular following can watch it if they want to but then also it's its own sort of thing and it's not something where i'm planning on uploading regularly or it being some it's just sort of a somewhere i can just dump some content that's not the same and you know i, I like playing among us with subscribers online and that doesn't fit in with the darts so i can play it on that channel so if people want to come have a game on the computer with me they can do it there so it's basically just somewhere I can be a bit more non-dart playery yeah. and interact on a different level. So, I mean, obviously, I, I'm I'm quite new into the into the YouTube scene as well, but um, you know, we've got a fantastic community with lots of really really great fans. Some people love it for the darts. Some people love it for for getting to know the players, getting to know people, um, wanting to know more about darts. What what flights do I use? What you know, and that's that's uh, that's what you know the the community provides. And I think that the Edgar's playground was a, was a nice, like you say, that sort of separate way to just keep that keep mm -hmm. that to the side, but still keep things going. Great fun, guys. Edgar playground i'll put it in the link as well have you always been mischievous yeah yeah uh again that's my dad you know um literally I'm sorry uh, yeah it's my dad um pranks galore from a young age and then it, it passed on you know and poor old jody <laughs> yeah did she know what yeah. she was getting herself into or did you like put on this facade as being like a, a proper gentleman when you were dating no, I was. Uh, I, I tried. I, I do try to do the whole gentlemanly game, but I just can't help going straight back to type. And you know, it's all I know. You know, from let's say from a very young age, it was pranks, jokes, all that sort of stuff, all the time. Then you go to school, and uh, it, school's just riddled with it, isn't it? You know, from trying to go through class doors to like you know, just the second you go into the classroom and you're going in next your mate next to each other and you're like, oh we're stuck we can't get through and then everyone's behind you like, oh they're trying to get in to then like the the other sort of pranks and things that actually go on in the rooms and uh school wasn't for me very productive you know <laughs> i mean which is ironic that i ended up then going and teaching yeah you obviously ha haven't haven't uh haven't grown up in the same way that I have. I, I I love to laugh and joke around, but I mean, one of the things that I find fascinating as well is is another prank target of yours in Dazza. Um, how did how did that friendship and that that banter start? I've actually done this. Uh, I've actually been in these sort of banter wars with players a few times. So uh, first one was Kevin Painter. We used to rip into each other quite a lot. Then it was Corey Cadby, and then with Glenn. I think there was one day where I'd put on... No, it's the Grand Slam. We were talking about the Grand Slam. And I said, this could be the group. And I put two ends in Glenn. And he put, it's Glenn. You know, with one end. And then it just sort of got out of control really quick to the point where we just 
jibe at each other almost daily you know it'd become a thing of right how can i get one up on him today how can i get one up today and you know some of the things that and the other thing is i really like the sort of people who you can say what you want to and it doesn't matter you know there's no oh there's a boundary or there's a line you don't cross or this that, the other say what you want you won't take offense to it and i'll return that in in kind sort of thing and when you get that relationship with someone it's great it's just when you when people do it when you haven't got that relationship with them you're like what yeah, well, that, that <laughs> it, <it> well. <laughs> yeah like, what, what are you on about you know but when you've got that relationship with someone where you've almost set that boundary out that actually we're going to do this there's no boundaries crack on make it as good as you can make it sort of thing that's the sort of relationship i've got with glenn and i do like that side of it we haven't heard much recent lately between you you've started being nice to each other we hate it bring back the banter <laughs> yeah i think we had our wings clipped a little bit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, <come on. laughs> there's, there's some people that don't get it even when like because this is the problem with social media is great and it's dangerous at the same time in the fact that People will see something and then form an opinion very, very quickly. Now, if I'm going to form an opinion on anything, I see it right. There it is. I need to look deeper before I've got an opinion. Too many people will look at something and have an opinion based on a headline without even reading the article, yeah, yeah. article or looking any further. Yeah. And there was some complaints about some of the things and that they're like, oh, these are bullying each other or this, that, the other. And actually, if they look at it, they'll know that Glenn's done giveaways for the channel. Glenn's been on the channel. We've complimented each other at different times. You know, there's so many clues there that it's all just if a joke. The context stuff. They see something. That's what they've seen. They don't know the background behind it. It's yeah. They, I completely, uh, completely get that. And, uh, yeah, but we 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 miss it. It it was good. Really. You'll know what it's like um, if you make a video and you you put the title of the video on, and then someone will make a comment on it, and they're like you didn't watch the video did you and they're like no and it's like well maybe you should watch the video before you have an opinion yeah, yeah. on what the content of the video is <laughs> I, so, I, get, I had one recently they go oh really great review uh you know uh, what, what way are they i'm like it's in the video yeah you, you just put great review you haven't even watched it but oh well <laughs> well the other danger is the the little skip 15 second button and yeah. they'll skip that and then someone will say like like there's one video I've done where I measured dartboards and someone goes, oh, but you only measured one section. It's like, well, actually, I said in the video that we measured all the sections, but it'd be very boring to watch. Yeah, so yeah. we skipped that and shown you one. You've obviously skipped that bit, haven't you? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I did, actually. It's like, maybe you should watch the whole thing if you're going to have an opinion. Yeah, and yeah. that that's the danger with that. And I think that's why we probably thought we'd best rein it back a little bit because opinions are formed quick. Strong opinions are formed quick, but that's just the danger of the world we live in now, isn't it? So. It is. It is. I think the thing is, you, you've got to, you know, whilst I believe in, in freedom of speech, you should be able to say what you want to say when you're in those positions, when you're thinking about the out of context things, you do have to be a little bit careful. But, you know, I think you should still be able to say what you want to say. Your channel is very, very honest. I think um, there are probably more things that you would would say, but like, like you say there is a danger of being taken out here's one for you freedom of speech that is such a cop-out for somebody saying something that's absolutely daft oh it's my opinion i can say what i want the thing is with freedom of speech freedom of speech yeah you can say what you want but what you say is how we judge you as the per defines you as the person yeah. for example you could be scrolling through facebook and you think my god that guy's got some proper ugly kids i'm not going to message him go god your kids are ugly it, there might be there might be awful it might be like the elephant man's children but uh, by me messaging and saying that that defines me as yeah. being the idiot yeah, but yeah. it's my opinion and i've got freedom of speech so i should be able to tell you that your kids are ugly yeah. no or the other thing when people you put something up and then so people go uh, oh i'm not interested in that that's the same as me going to Tesco's, walking down and seeing someone advertising childcare and going, I don't need childcare. I'm going to ring them. Yeah, hey, yeah. I don't need childcare. Why are you advertising this in here? You know, yeah. it's exactly the same thing. And it's just that, that freedom of speech is such a, um, such a cop out, but it's how, yeah, you can say what you want, but 
what you say and in the context of you say it is what you're defined by and that's who you are so if you're saying these stupid things <laughs> yeah that's as, as you say freedom of speech doesn't mean that there's not connotations things afterwards you know there's not there's not repercussions well, the other one that um, comes up a lot is people going uh, oh but that's my opinion and it's like yeah but just because you've got an opinion doesn't argue against facts. And then have you seen the photo where there's like a number six and one stands one end and he goes, that's a six. And the other stands the other end and he goes, that's a nine. And then it goes, just because you can see it from one way doesn't mean that it's not right for the other person. Yeah. What a load of rubbish. Because actually that number wasn't just randomly shaped on the floor. That was there for a reason. Yeah. It is a six or it is a nine. That. It's one of the two. Yeah. So what we need, we need to do some research. Maybe there's a pattern here that goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, you're wrong. You because you're not looking at it from every angle. Yeah. Look at it from a bigger picture because that picture is such a cop out for other people. Like I say, it's a six, it's a nine, it's something. <laughs> one of them people are right. They're yeah. not both right. Just because you see it as a nine doesn't mean you're now right. It means you haven't done your research because it's actually a six. <laughs> absolutely no i completely agree i could uh, run from the trailer <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, you know people do have to be you know i think in 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 positions where they are able to influence you know just because you can say whatever you want doesn't mean that you should you know there are moments yeah. you can just you know if you don't have nothing to say, you don't say anything you know it's, it's yeah. fine. It's <laughs> I've I've got a, a few quick questions just before we finish uh, that I've I've collected from friends and from fans. Um, so I'll just fire them very very oh, quickly. Man, this could take ages if you want to ask fans questions here. <laughs> no no no, just give me some quick fire que uh, quick fire answers to these. So um, how long have you known and been friends with the darts ref? Ooh, um, I think I knew him when he was a referee, but I think we probably became more friends when with the YouTube because. I think knowing someone's one thing and then having something in common is what tends to make friendships. And when we did the YouTube, we both roughly started around the same time. He's clearly better with computers, graphics, all that sort of stuff. So um, I was able to pick his brain on a few things like that as well. But so I'm just an idiot with an iPhone that I turned sideways one day and filmed something. And then and now I've got this equipment. I don't know what to do. I mean, look, I've got this box here today and I've just got all these pieces in it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. This is this is the new microphone you asked about, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've got some instructions, but I've got this rule that I never read instructions. So maybe Jody will look through that at some point. But <laughs> I haven't got a clue how to set it up. Uh, I haven't got a clue, you know, what to do with it. So he's normally sort of my go-to guy. <laughs> My friend Ben actually had a question um, that, that relates to something you mentioned there, like, you know, you're not being very good with graphics. The da, 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 Edgar TV, what made you change that? Because, I mean, you've gone from your high quality to, to some, you know, media cop out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to change it because, it, I mean, it's still quite basic and it's still there. But I wanted to change it. Just I'm, because, I'm teasing, of course. <laughs> yeah, the first impression of the channel to people that come to it, it just gives it a little bit more. Because the one thing I would never change it for is because my graphics and all the things that I do with it and my knowledge of being able to put together a good video or edit a good video is rubbish. So if they come to it and I've got a big flashy intro and then all of a sudden there's me sat there like, with yeah. little pop-ups every now and then coming around me in your boxes, shorts. Not, not, <laughs> in your boxes they'll be like i've been missold here where at least then they know to lower their expectation a little bit oh it's that sort of channel okay i can i can get into this okay oh it is taking the mick again right it's a bit tongue-in-cheek i think them 10 seconds of that intro really set the tone for what i do so i, I wouldn't change them for anything you can still get the people in the comment section now like oh change your intro <laughs> one of the people um put something like your intro is rubbish bruh and i'm like he used your like this and he used bro in like a weird mm. sense i'm like review your sentence and see if i'm ever going to take advice from that yeah. you know? <laughs> i'm not very good at grammar and spelling and this guy took the mick you know so. <laughs> do one mate i mean i i'm i'm jealous in a way because i'm completely the other end of the spectrum it takes me forever to do my videos and i'm like oh, 
Matt just gets to put the camera up and and and, and upload it, and he's 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 living the dream here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do it. Everything I do is one take. Yep. With minimal editing sometimes i might chop a little bit out the middle or something like that but I've it's all in that. one take <laughs> <laughs> just drag and drop and chuck it on the intro outro up it goes you know it's very but the, the my if you had to ask me what i make my channel feel like in my eyes this is what i think i'm doing i don't know if it is or it isn't but i like it to be like you're almost just watching someone on a skype or a zoom call or something and you just sat I've been watching your mate who's having a chat with you sort of thing on the sort of technology level that you're not watching a production, you're watching a person. Yeah. And that's sort of what I feel I'm providing. Whether I am or I'm not, whether people are like, it's a load of nonsense or whether what 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 people, I don't know, I've never really asked that feedback. Maybe that's something I need to ask, but that's go. sort of what there's, I feel. There's a new video, video idea for you with, uh, with comments and feedback. You can do it on a live stream. That's a way to connect yeah. thing as well. The live streams are fantastic. They're great fun. You know, uh, the excitement of just typing something and seeing it on there and then you going, oh, yeah, that's a really good question. And you're, <laughs> they're looking at what I've just put. You know, it's exciting. Yeah. It's <laughs> nice to interact and they're interacting with a professional dart player. So it's it's nice to have that. I think I think darts is definitely one of the most accessible sports and it's nice to see that and get close to those players. Uh, another question. What was your favorite wrestling moment ever? Uh, from me or from watching? From from watching. Ooh, do you know what? I'm going to go quite recent, and I'm going to go Edge's Royal Rumble return last year. Okay. I literally lost my head. It was. It, I was laid in bed, right? Because normally what I do is I'll leave the bed just in case something happens or something. And I'm like, oh. and Jody's asleep, but now. She had work the next morning. I'm laid there watching the Royal Rumble. And, thing. and then it went the, you think you know me bit. And literally, I nearly pushed her out of the bed. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like what, what's going on? What's going on? And I'm like, Edge. She's like, what? What's an, what, what? Edge what? What's that? I'm like, look, look. And she's like, you just woke me up for that. And then she couldn't get back to sleep because she was panicking because she thought something yeah. was wrong. <laughs> yeah, I nearly chucked her out of the bed. I was that excited. <laughs> I, think, I think for me, and this will probably be one for you as well, as like Undertaker coming back to life, like through the ring, all, all of the drama of kind of the, uh, that that era was, was... The lightning bolt hitting the casket. Oh, yeah. amazing. I was just like, this is, this yeah. is pure. I mean, that, that for me, that got me absolutely... Um, Hardy Boy's return was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Brett versus Bulldog, Brett versus Austin. Yeah, yeah. Amazing matches. Uh, the the ladder match. I like incredible. Uh, I like Brett it. versus Owen Hart, WrestleMania ten opening match. Opening Les match. Brock, Le Brock Lesnar as well was was when when I saw that absolute take, monster yeah. of a man coming in and stuff and uh, the Goldberg. Anyway, we, we can we, we can talk ages about that. So um, nice. But yeah. Um, will you be selling some Edgar TV boxes as you are often sat in them? Do you know what? I think I've missed a trick there, haven't I? Well, that's, the next, that, that's a call off this, boys. Uh... I've actually ordered some stuff last night, like some Edgar TV stuff, just for my own personal use. Like, um, you, you'll see them on the stream, some tops and some hats and things, just for my own personal use. Uh, but I can imagine that Mr. Trick. when they're seen, they'll be like, oh, they look awesome. I'm wearing one of them. So. <laughs> The shorts could be a way forward. Yeah. There we go, guys. Watch this space. We could have provoked some boxers to come. Have you ever farted on Ryan Searle while he sleeps or does a? Not while they've slept. <laughs> I, I've farted in the direction of. I yes. mean, I think you shared today, in fact, for uh, for Zach's birthday. <laughs> He's just thinking away, chatting away, and you're like, wait. <laughs> 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 you never grow out of it, do you? You never grow out of it. They're and funny. they're funny. I mean, if girls are disgusted by it, I'm sorry, but it is funny. If you actually sit there and think about it, it's funny. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's a game of one upsmanship that as well, isn't it? So you get you get one up on your fellow man by yeah. dropping one. And you know, <laughs> is Ryan's Ryan's not innocent on this. Ryan is I'll I'll you can clip this and use this as a headline if you want. Yep. Ryan is the biggest farter I've ever met. I've never known anyone fart as much as Ryan does. Wow. And I, really? I'm known for a bit of flatulence. He beats me about three to one. Really? Okay. Well, we're going to have to 
Fartoff is coming up in the next series. <laughs> oh, I'd lose. I would lose. <laughs> it literally, it's almost breed in and then it comes out the back end. You know, it's like an all through system for Ryan. <laughs> Uh, why why did you have to get a new laptop? Because Jodie spilled orange juice on it. She'll deny it. She'll she'll pa- try and pass the blame onto me, but she she decided. And oh, she, she's one of these people that you you have to say something to them about twenty times, and they'll only change something when something goes wrong. And she kept putting the drink next to the laptop. I'm like, don't put that there. Don't put that there. Don't put. It. And then one day it spilled on it. And now she's learned a lesson. But, you. you know, we're 600 pounds in now into the fixing of the problem. And, you know, now she's now she's learned a lesson. So. I heard it was you. Well, the, the story is she she was on the bed and she put a little table, you know, like the little eating table things. Yeah. She put one of them on, put the laptop on top of it. Because the fan got quite hot, she put it over the edge. So the laptop was sat over the lip. So it's naturally going to tip. Yeah, yeah. Then she put the orange juice on it and put it on a bed. A bed. Not a firm surface, a bed. So when I get on the bed, the bed dips, which causes this, which causes the laptop to tip this way, and on goes the orange juice. I've been in these relationships before. I think that this is a true story, and I think that Jodie is, is, is to blame. I, 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 I'm, I'm on your side for that one. <laughs> Um, d- 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 favorite movie. <laughs> favorite movie. Ooh, oh, oh. right. Um, I'm the sort of person that watches about ten movies full stop, but I'll watch them every night. And I've recently got into Bad Boys, you know, the new one. And Jody's like, "No, you're going to kill this for me because we've watched it for two weeks in a row now." And before that, it was Jumanji. Before that, it was Home Alone two. Because over Christmas period, you watch that about 40 nights in a row. Yeah. Because I like I like background film. I don't want to watch a film that I've got to actually watch. Like, I watched Elf for the first time this year, and it took me three attempts to watch it because I can't concentrate on a film for that long. Yeah. But once I've watched it, I can have it on in the background, and I can just enjoy it being on and almost casually watching a film where I'm not, I'm not one of them people that – as I said, I always like to be doing something. I always like to be busy. I can't just sit and watch a film for two hours or whatever it is without, like, going to the cinema for me is a is a nightmare. I want to be up and you know doing something. Play dance so. while you're watching the movie. Like, how can you yeah, I, I don't want to concentrate on the whole thing. Like this bit's boring. I want to zone out for a bit and then come <laughs> back to it. Fair enough. Uh, favorite food. <laughs> Chinese, although I'm recently starting to enjoy an Indian sweet and sour chicken. Though, if I had to pick, mm, very good. Bang bang chicken, nice. Very good. Uh, <laughs> shredded chili beef. I'm a big fan of as well. That's quite. It's not Ooh. too chilly. Ooh. I'm going to have to have a Chinese tonight now. I've got ribs. Um, who's your darting hero? Um, Darting. It used to be Dennis Priestley. I used to go to the World Match Play in my red and black leather Dennis Priestley jacket that he'd signed. I used to have my Dennis the Menace top on, and I, I wish I could find some more of those photos, you know, the, the, the Dennis Priestley era. So Dennis Priestley was one. Um, and then I'd probably have to say more recently, me. <laughs> Built up again beautifully, playing the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think's the most underrated player? Oh, there's quite a few. Um, I think in terms of underrated, it's always hard to say what makes someone underrated. Mm. But you know, I think Ryan Searle, although he's starting to get a lot of recognition, Luke Humphreys. It's tough because I guess some, you know, some people, if they come into the forefront, you kind of, you, you see it, you know, you see it. Yeah. It's, like, it's like people going Michael Smith. It's like, I don't think he's the most underrated people are just expecting it to happen at some point. I don't think he's underrated. I think he's, he's highly rated. It's, it's just, he's not quite done it. If I had to pick one, I'd go me. <laughs> This is the gift that keeps giving, you see. He's, he's just building you up. 
you haven't seen as well with Matt be- uh, beating Gary Anderson with the 170 checkout, it is on YouTube, so do check it out and, you know, you'll have a look in the comments. There might be 15 comments from Matt on there just just, just highlighting it. He, he's just so... <laughs> um, look, Matt, it's been great having you on the show. I'm super glad that you remembered. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Call it that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, no, I forgot about that. Can we do it now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm eating a curry. <laughs> um, look, it's uh, thanks again. And if you wouldn't mind advising people of what they should do immediately after watching this interview, aside from obviously clicking in the comments and having a look at subscribe for Matthew Edgar, they might want to subscribe, subscribe to... I'm guessing um, what they should immediately do after this is reassess their life choices... Because if they've just sat and watched this for the last 30, 40 minutes, <laughs> maybe you need to get yourself a hobby. Yeah. Right. There we go. It, 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 you know, it could be either subscribe to Love Darts or get a, get a life. I mean, th- those two sentences go hand in hand, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you don't want to get a life, and obviously lockdown at the moment, you can't go out and do other things, then why not subscribe and get some more nonsense from the darting community that is YouTube? Absolutely. And uh, and likewise, if, if you want to see more of Matt and uh, get great insight into professional darts, check the comments below and subscribe to Edgar TV. You've got Edgar Playground as well if you want to have a little bit of fun and enjoy Matt playing practical jokes on Jodie and uh, her, her feeling very sorry for herself. If you're feeling... <laughs> You know, if you're feeling like you're feeling a bit down, you need that little pick me up, definitely go over to Edgar's Playground. It's good fun and um, check him out on social media as well. I think you're on um, Facebook. Everything, man. Everything. Yeah. everything. Everyone's on Instagram, everything. Facebook, Twitter, Snappy Chat. You can come on most things now. Yeah. And if you want to talk to him directly, check out one of his live feeds. Um, he does uh, a lot of. I think it's Among Us is is, is the popular yeah. game at the moment, which is very very. Um, which I think you're becoming an expert on. I swear, every every evening I see a streaming session of, of Among oh, Us. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going to become a professional at Among Us instead of darts soon. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll take anything, you know. <laughs> so, the other thing is um, drop comments in the section. I do regularly check comment sections on my videos. So if you've got any questions of your own or anything, just drop them in the comment section. I do try and respond to as many as possible. If I've answered the question many times, then I just sort of like don't. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's uh, if you've got a, a question or anything, I, I do spend a lot of time responding to comments. I'm very interactive in that sense as well. Absolutely. Well, thanks anyway for spending time with us and uh, go enjoy your, your your food. Football's on as well. I hope lockdown yeah. finishes soon and we all get a chance to uh, to see you playing live and bringing the prime time to the big stage. And um, good luck with everything that's going on. I'll probably be speaking to you tomorrow or during the week at some point anyway. Such is the amazing world that we have with the, uh, the YouTube um, darting community that grows and grows. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. And remember, love darts. <laughs>